going to be a Q&A, so I advise you all to get your pens, pencils, papers, notepad. I don't care if you use your cell phones to write down the questions you want to ask. Just do not interrupt unless there's a space to be given. You know, this is a free platform. This is what we do. You know exactly what we do here. We educate, motivate, and insp inspire people to move forward. All right, so before I even start, I would be wrong if I didn't read this because this is elegantly written. So I must read it, at least part of it. And I don't believe this first sentence, by the way, because if you look, and I know this is my platform, so I'm allowed to say what I say and I say things nicely, but you can tell that black does not crack. Because let me start by saying, in the first sentence of the bio, it says, Christine L. has, has learned in her 50 plus years, I do not believe this lady is 50 years of age or 50 years young or whatever phrase you want to use, but she has learned who she is. And I actually wrote part of this without knowing that she was going to send me this because I wasn't prepared just in case, but this part I was right about because this is the only part I wrote. I didn't know the year though. She is a woman of God, a mother, a daughter, a sister, a friend, a wife, and a multiple six-figure earner. Yes, you can clap for that. You can clap for that. Let's go. Now, what a boss lady, six-figure earner since 2014, ladies and gentlemen, a decade. So there's proof in the pudding, as they say, a whole decade, all right? She was created to love on people and help them to understand that God has given them everything they need inside to be successful. Life. Now, I mean, you can see that everywhere. If you've been following her, she's been on YouTube. This is what she, she has. Everything is life now. There's a part that made me giggle. Life now. Almost every business she has created has this. So you have life now insurance. Life now credit, which I didn't know. Life now mask, which made me die. Because this, <laughs> made over time. this lady started creating masks and she made a business from it. Um, she has life now agency and life now shop. Life now stands for... Um, living in full expectation, never ending opportunity within. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I can read this forever. I don't know if Hubby's here, but that man right there, I give him a clap too. If not, I'll see him tomorrow on her live, and we'll talk about that later. But I want to give this lady a, a, a clap. And without further ado, you're not going to hear my voice no more because I'm going to be ready for questions. I'm going to be taking notes because I haven't been a sixth grade earner for a decade yet. You know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to try to get there. You know? Listen. Listen. Like listen. I'm listen. Send it over to you, all right. Can you guys hear me? All right. Trying to move some things over. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Mike? Check. Yeah, we got you. All yeah. right. Thank you so much, so much for having me. And and I'm looking at Takiria. I think I said her name right. Her her profile picture. I thought that was her. And I'm like, why is she moving? She's got the perfect dag on screen picture. I just gotta let you know, girlfriend. Love that. I was like, wait. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. But um, thank you so much, Leo, for having me. Um, you know, we had a chance to talk a little while ago, and um, you would ask me, you know, if I minded jumping on here. And I was like, well, no. I've been talking about getting back on, you know, lives, getting back on trainings and things like that. I've been doing a lot of things behind the scenes for the last, I guess, year, year and a half. And the time is now for us to just break that thing on out. And why not? do it with the road to six figures in eight months or less right so um a lot of you guys that don't know me there's a husband he was getting shout outs earlier you missed it raw but there he is right there um but yes i have been in this business since no um november 2011 and um i know when i was talking to leo we were just talking about how you know some some individuals struggle right and as I was doing a little bit of research, of course, I know my story, but um, those, again, that know me know I'm going to put down some notes because I got to kind of get things in order because if not, I'm going to jump around like crazy and you may not be able to keep up with my ADHD, right? But um, I was part-time. I was very part-time when I came in here. I'm not going to go through my whole story. I do have a YouTube channel and it is on there as far as like my whole life, if you will, as far as the insurance industry. But I did not start making money until one, I realized that I couldn't make that money. And what I mean by that is, is I had to change, right? I had to change. So the way that I talked, the way that I walked, the way that I carried myself, the way that I dealt with business had to change. There was no way that I was making that six figure because had I been able to make that six figures 
before I would have. Because I've always been one. Let me shut that window. Sorry. I've always been one who um, made money, right? Obviously, you're here in the life now and all my different businesses. And yes, when the pandemic hit, I made a mask for me and my daughter. Went to Walmart and everybody on social media was like, where'd you get your mask? They couldn't get them. And then the next day I had a business. So pray for my husband. He, he laughs at me all the time about that. But, um, you know, I had to change. I had to change. First couple of years within the business, uh, very, I didn't know anything about leads. Okay. I didn't buy leads, didn't know about the leads, anything like that. I only had one carrier at the time and it was final expense. All right. So I am, I call myself a final expense specialist. I've been doing that for over 12 years. And um, I made the first million with final expense, one product. So for individuals that think that, you know, um, it's not possible, it's, it's your own mindset and it's your own mental block. Now, when I went to six figures, so I'm going to give you um, several different things. I've added to it since uh, 20, what was it? 20, oh God, 19, I want to say is when I started my zero to six figures online course where I helped hundreds of agents get to six figures through that course. And I loved it. It absolutely was amazing. And a lot of individuals' issues were they thought that they can make it to six figures. They didn't really understand that you have to change. You have to change. And you have to put notice on everyone else around you that you are going to change and everybody around you, they're going to have to change too. And a lot of individuals that I started the business, friends that I started the business with, um, associates, they're not in my circle today right? So you need to understand that it is something that is going to be very uncomfortable, right? So I always ask people, are you sure that you want to make six figures, right? What does that mean to you? Why is that something that's so important? What are you willing to do in order to make that happen? The year that I decided that I fit in the business because I did not feel like I fit in the business. My husband is the one that kind of pushed me in to the, not kind of, he's the one that pushed me into this business. He felt that I would be really great for all, all the things insurance, and I did not. Um, and it took a while. Even once I got into the business, I played around. I was very part-time. Um, I went to the meetings and things like that, but it was like, I think I was the only, one out of four females in the whole agency, so it was all men. My husband was not in the in the um, business at the time. And I was like by myself, you know, and that's another thing. You cannot make it alone. You cannot get on an island. You cannot just not um, plug in to your teams, to your groups, to your upline, if you will. It just doesn't work. That's again, why 95% of agents don't make it. They think they can come in. They think they can just get the contracts. They think they can just, you know, um, read a few things or listen to a million YouTube videos and then wonder why it doesn't work because you need that assistance. You need a mentor. You need somebody that's going to help you basically keep you from jumping off the ledge every freaking day because it was like almost every day in the beginning where there's that mindset. We have to change the mindset. So let me, let me jump into this because again, when I decided that I liked being an agent, again, that took two years, um, and I decided... I encourage, I motivate, I love to love on people. I'm a trainer, you know, I'm all of those things. And I'm like, I need to be a manager. That's what I need to do in order to make this business work for me, right? And at the time, the business that I was in, I was told, well, you can only be a manager if you make six figures, all right? So I was told, well, you, that's fine and dandy, but you're not going to be a manager until you make six figures because how can you show someone else how to do it if you've never done it? And so that is when I went on the, um, you know, the all of the things of how am I going to make the six figures? I don't like talking to people outside about business, right? I was the one that if there was a crowd walking down the street, I'm crossing the street, then I'm across the street back over. And I'm thinking, how is this possible? But it is. And again, it means that you have to change. So one of the main things that I 
um, did initially was started to really understand the life insurance business. A lot of us come in, we did the online course, and I don't know about y'all, but I like three days breezed through it, failed it the first time, did it again for three more days, passed it, and don't remember most of the stuff on that test. I was told I didn't need it. I just need to get a 70, pass the test, you can be an agent. But to really be able to help your clients understand um, you know, what they need, you need to really understand the process. So the first part of it is understanding what life insurance really is. What can it do for the client? Also understanding the process of a funeral. My sister ended up passing away one day before I was going out of town for this manager's retreat. She passed away the day before I was hitting the road. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. So keep in mind, and I, and I, I noticed when I'm getting ready to go to another level and a serious level, it's like everything in the world is, is attacking. And it's like, it's trying to keep you distracted. It's trying to keep you from really what God has for you. All right. So keep that in mind that something greater is on the other side and you just have to push through. I did get on the plane. I went to the manager's retreat. I thank God that I did. Came back home and laid my sister to rest after the um after the um managers and training retreat, if you will. But we understood and we learned the process. That threw me into the process. I mean, head first, because my mom was like, Well, you've been doing life insurance for the last couple of years. This is what you do. It's like, okay, selling life insurance and doing a funeral is two different things. But what it did was it helped me understand the mind space that beneficiaries are in whenever the loved ones pass away. And that gave me more empathy. That gave me more passion, more compassion for individuals and more of a drive to let people know, listen, if you've never ever dealt with a funeral or cremation, if you've not been responsible for cremation, you have no idea what responsibility you're putting on your loved ones. And then to not have insurance, that's like double damage, right? So I literally went from 42, excuse me, 58,000 to 142,000 and some change that year when I decided that I was going to get out of my own way and that I was going to go and do the work. And the first step was getting on that plane the day after my sister passed away. That was the first step. When I got to that training, we talked about the mind, right? Millionaire Millionaire's Mind from T. Harv Eckerd really dug into that. And that is really shifting your mindset, shifting your belief systems. A lot of us have been taught one way. And again, most of our, our loved ones or our family members, they are not making six figures. So how can we continue listening to them or following them? And they're not where we want to go. So even though they're trying to tell us certain things, a lot of times they they instill fear into us. I remember my mother like, you and me going some life insurance? I'm like, you, all the things, right? And then you're going to be out door knocking by yourself? Well, what if somebody does? And it's like all the fear was put on me. And it's like, okay. I had to start thinking about it. Well, I'm working leads. Now, in the year that I decided to go full time, I started buying leads. And um, I'm like, people know. Like, it's their name, their address. And all I was telling them was, the company gave me the leads, which they did. And then I had what was called map view, which I used to be able to create the route. And I'm like, they know exactly where I'm at. You know, anybody that has an iPad, you see the little blue or red dot showing your location. So that gave me security when I was in the field. Although I was hearing all this junk from loved ones who didn't know any better. They were just trying to keep me safe. But that is where we have to like understand what we're doing, what we want, and then having to separate that, right? So the mindset, changing the mindset, having to shift um, the individuals that are around you and the information that you're gaining from them. And then again, understanding the process. Now, if you've never been through having to um, deal with somebody's funeral or burial before, I advise you to go ahead and Google it. Ask the people around you. Ask your clients, your potential clients, have you ever had to be responsible for a funeral? Can you tell me about that process? What that's going to do is that's going to put your client 
into that space, that emotional space again, of what it was like. And then that helps them to understand, well, okay, well, you're beneficiary. Have they ever had to do that before? Because you may know what to do, but do they? And this is why it's important for us to get these things in order. So that's also, one, you're learning and growing from your client, but also helping them not sell themselves, but see the value even more so because they're reliving the importance of getting this coverage. Is this making sense to you guys? Okay, you know, I need like feedback. All right. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, understanding the myths and the misconceptions about the life insurance. You know, again, we get our license. We jump in here. All we want to do is make money. We want to get the rings. I'm like, I don't even know where my ring is. I must have taken it off when I'm downstairs because I always had my, my six-figure ring as one of the, the things that I was running for, right? Um, we run for these things, but we don't take the time to really understand our position, understand what it is that we really need to do in order for us to achieve it, Right. And again, it is learning. We have to understand it. We don't need to sit here and watch 152 videos on presentation. Because guess what? When you talk to that client, it's, they're going to say something different. And then you're going to be thinking like, oh my God, well, they didn't say this. Today. Listen, you are going to learn in the field. In the field also means on the phone. You're going to learn everything you need by being on the phone but we need to listen more than we're talking. And we also, again, outside of income producing activity hours, we should be learning these different steps. What does it take to take care of a burial or cremation? What are the steps? What does the family members need? Because that's going to help you understand even more so how important our jobs are. All right. Once we understand the myths and the misconceptions, because you'll get the people that say, oh, well, I can be buried in a backyard. I don't know how many times I've heard that. Um, you'll hear people say, well, you know, I don't want to get life insured because it's putting a jinx on me. We know that's not true. Like Everybody's going to die, right? The people that say, oh, well, you know, I've been turned down from life insurance before, so I can't get covered. Well, we understand that that's different insurance carriers. So we have multiple carriers and we have carriers that can cover everybody, even people that are in the hospital right now, right? And understanding that will help you to understand when your client or your potential client says one thing, how you can actually help them understand that that's not really reality. It's not the truth. And let me see. Let me help you. We are problem solvers. The sooner you realize that that is our position and our job, our job is to find the problem, to help the client understand what the problem is, and then to fill it. Right. And then that gives them peace. And then, of course, we have peace because we did our job. The next thing is, oh, my goodness, because we on telesales now. We got to master the telesales, y'all. The telesales part, because people, when we're in the field, we can go knock on that door and we can smile. Knock, knock, knock. Hey, I'm here from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. You must be special. I done drove five hours away to help you. It only takes 10 to 15 minutes. Where can we sit? It was easy peasy, right, at the door. Not really, but it was. Because... Out of 10 years, I think I got the door slammed on me like 10 times maybe because I'm smiling big, you know. I'm coming with big energy. On the phone, you got to be a little bit different. You can't talk too fast. You got to make sure that you're speaking clearly. You got to make sure your headset is good. You got to make sure you can hear them. You have to make sure you're verifying some information within that first three seconds to make sure that they know that you're not just a telemarketer. So you have to understand the different techniques when you're on the phone. In the beginning, it's not time to be joking because we need to keep them on the line. And then your personality can come out later on throughout that call, right? It's a little bit different. Whereas I can be goofy at the door. And make them laugh initially, and I'm in. So it is different. So understanding tonality, understanding that when you smile, you, they can hear when you're smiling. And when you're not smiling, they can hear when you're not. Did you guys notice the difference in my tongue whenever I'm smiling? Right? They hear you smile. And if you get on that phone with a migraine, you just got done fighting a dog, they hear it. And they don't want your BS because they have their own. So we always have to understand that. And even in the field, you know, that bad energy, they can, they can sense it. So the psychology of that selling, making sure that you are asking more questions so that you can understand 
what it is that they need. If you're coming on that phone or you're coming to that door and all you're doing is boom, 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 this presentation, you are never going to find out what their need is. So you can't feel the need and they understand that you're just there for a check. So I had to learn how to slow down because I was a very fast talker, especially when I'm uncomfortable and I'm nervous. I'm going to go and I'm giving you all the knowledge, all the information, all the jargon that was not working. Hence the first year and a half of me in the insurance business was only doing between three to 5,000 a month, unless there was a contest, right? Because I was still being me, but I had to learn that I needed to change. Questions, asking questions to these clients is key. Had the lady telling me that she didn't fill out the lead. It was for somebody else. I'm like, well, whose birthday is it? Oh, well, that's my birthday. Well, whose address is it? Oh, well, that's my address. Were you sure you weren't just looking for you too? Did somebody turn you down before? Well, you know what? I get, I got turned down before, but I got other life insurance. Okay. So you were looking, but you got turned down. Yeah, I was turned down. Okay. So you have some major health issues. I have all the carriers, ma'am. I can cover everybody. Even if you were in the hospital. Oh, for real? Well, I have HIV. Boom. That's the problem. Almost all the carriers are not covering HIV. These carriers will call two or three clients, right? And then, I mean, two or three carriers, they get turned down, they're done. Their feelings are hurt. They're frustrated. They feel like they have nobody that can help them. And we actually have carriers, three of them I can think of at the top of my head, that can cover her. And I was like, oh, well, I can cover you, no problem. I have applicant, no, no medical questions, no physical. I can get you covered. Are you serious? Yes, ma'am. That's why I love what I do. But I would have never got there if I didn't ask the questions. So we have to understand that we need to stop thinking strict script and start problem solving. We need to ask these questions, start digging, right? And the tonality is key. If they think you're digging to be nosy, they're going to hang up on you. If they think you're digging, you know, for any reason other than helping them, they will shut the door on you. So that tonality calming down like, okay, well, you know what, just so that I can get this updated and just to make sure that I'm doing my part in trying to help you, let me just ask you a couple questions and I promise I'll get you off this phone, but I may be able to help you. That sounds more like I'm trying to help outside of another way. Okay. I'm looking at my time. All right. Listen, so here's the hard part. Well, it was hard for me. Building your clientele. So once you've gone through your friends and your family, if you've done that, I did not do that. I went through one of my girlfriend's cell phones and took every name out of that phone. After that second year, I've already gone through everybody that she knew and her family members knew. So I got leads. When I went to the managers in training, I was shown the difference of how you buying these leads keep you in business, that we're in business, and that it needs to be a constant flow, all right? Postcards. I started buying the postcards um, right now. I mean, my God, I wish I knew about Canva uh, many years ago because Canva has postcards already ready for you. Some of these carriers already have these postcards ready. You just put your name and number and print them out, right? But I was over there creating postcards that who knows how good they were or not. I bought a ton of postcards and I promise you it was myself and my two kids 5.30 in the morning at the parking ride around here where we live. There were six, there's like three different ones. And I did it at five in the morning, waiting until the people would come park to go to work at six in the morning. We sit in the car and wait till the parking lot filled up. And then I had them a contest to see how fast we can put all of my postcards on everybody's car. I went through garages. I went through the, the uh, amusement park. I got in trouble. Because I did see the sign that said, you know, private. But they didn't say I couldn't put a postcard on the car. I didn't know any better. So by the time they called me, I had already had over 5,000 postcards out. But these were things that were very uncomfortable for me, but I found a way to do it anyway so that I can drum up some clientele. Straight door knocking. Just straight door knocking. I had a lead. They weren't home. I door knocked in, on that street. Hey, my name is Christine. I was just down the street um, trying to help one of your neighbors. You know what? They are not home. I've been here three times and, you know, I can never catch them. Do you know what time they're home? You know, what kind of car they have? 
Okay, writing that stuff down on a lead. And while I'm here, has anybody had a chance to go over the information with you, the life insurance information with you guys? No? Oh, it only takes like 10 minutes. You want to come outside or can I come in? Every single day. See, getting the six figures is not going to be easy. There's no, no cookie cutter. Oh, I'm going to buy this CRM. I'm going to get this lead from this lead vendor. And people are just going to be calling me left and right and, and writing policies. No, we got to hustle. We have to work. We got to get out of our own way in order to make that happen. Right? Identifying what your target market is going to be. I love final expense. I still love final expense, even though I can do the wealth building plans. I can do annuities. I can do all these things. I love final expense. One, because it's my baby. That's what I started with. It's an easy underwriting process. Um, you know, the seniors are sweet. They know they're about to go and they're ready to buy, right? Although I'm really liking mortgage protection. So I'm going to dip more into that because these people are young. They're vibrant. They're working. They just bought a house and they want to protect it. So finding that niche, that market of who you want to target and go ham on it. Go ham on it. If we try to do all of the things, you're going to miss something because you're going to be too scattered. You're going to be calling this lead and then trying to switch script and then trying to call this one and then pick a niche and go become a specialist in it. Know all of the things final expense. Know all the things mortgage protection. Know all the things IUL right? The blessing that I've been in it so long, I know final expense, back of my hand. So I can tap into mortgage protection now, right? The IULs kind of just flow in from some of the clients. It's just makes that an easy transition, but I'm not buying IUL leads, right? So I'm keeping, even, in the, even now, I'm keeping within my niche because I know it, I can execute it, and I can make money quickly. And that is what you need to do as a new agent. Pick your niche, whatever it's going to be, and learn everything you trusted me. Scared to death, 40 leads. And mind you, they were $35 a piece. I did not sell one. And I had every, I was out there two days. I had every single one of them talk to all of the people and did not sell one lead. So I'm gonna do, somebody do the math. See if we got a calculator. What is that, 40 times 35? Help me out. Fourteen hundred. Yes. Right. $1,400. New agent on leads. Out of town and didn't sell one. And I'm out there like, I can't go home without a sale. At all. And I called and asked for 40 more. And they were like, okay, you understand that's 2,800. I need 40 more. I need more leads. <laughs> I'm going to figure it out. My upline didn't work leads. So I did not have anybody to train me on leads. I had to figure it out. Today, we have video on video on video, agent upon agent, showing you, telling you, walking you through it, giving you examples. We did not have that 14 years ago, 12 years ago. We were spending money figuring this thing out. I wrote, I, I went back to one of my videos on my YouTube channel um, talking about making 20,000 in six days. I bought 82 leads. I spent $2,952 for those leads. I was able to present to 33 people. I mean, presenting, sitting down, going through the whole thing to the end. I sold 12. I was able to help 12 families. That IP was 20, a little over 20,000. And at that time, I was at about a 65% comp. But I still made enough to pay that debt and a profit. And I still had 49 leads left over. And I did not put on the video how many were not interested or I didn't see. But I had 49 leads left that I did not do a presentation with. You do that four times in a month, it's $52,000. It's $52,000. A lot of times we, we think it's not possible because we haven't done it. 
And then when we understand the work that has to be done, we don't want to do it. And that's why the why has to be so strong that whenever the times get hard, because there's plenty of days that you're not going to get a sale. You're not going to be able to help anybody. I heard a lady, oh my God, cuss Monica out. I don't know if that was today or yesterday, but she said so many F-bombs. I was like, my ears are bleeding on hello. Some of these people are going through it. The blessing, I believe for us, and I say us like Monica, myself, and a couple of us, other ones that have been in the business for years and we were in the field first, we had an opportunity to see what some of these clients that are final expense look like and what they're dealing with. So we understand that a lot of them are on medication. A lot of them are sick. A lot of them just had a death. A lot of them are living in, in, in houses and spaces that they never thought that they would live as, you know, um, dirty as it is, Right. They thought they'd have more help. They thought they'd have more money. They thought they'd have more resources by the time they became a senior and they don't. They're frustrated. And then here we go calling and we have the audacity to think that it's about us. It has nothing to do with us, right? And th I thank God that I know that now because I mean, you know, I don't, none of you all know me, but back in the day, I threw a whole wig at an old man because he cussed me out, called me the N word the whole nine. I threw my wig. I was crying. I went off. And my upline said, please tell me you did not leave anything with your name on it. And I was like, no, just my daggone wig. And my husband was crying. He was like, girl, don't ever go back out when you know, you're know you upset. And I was going through some things at the time. And they're like, you're a business owner. You don't have to go out when, you, when, when things aren't right. Like, But I didn't know. I didn't know. And I was running for my ring. And I didn't know that you don't want to burn out because then you can't help anybody, all right? So just definitely identifying your target market, your prospecting, getting the leads, the people that you help, be compassionate to them. And you wanna help their family too. We get so quick with hanging up and going to the next one. I do it now and thinking about this. And I was like, wow, I'm I'm missing the ball. The things that we did in the beginning are the things that we should still be doing because we'd be making so much more, right? We'd be making so much more. We get away from those things because there's so many more things like the CRMs and the Air AI. You have your little, you know, your 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 computer calling for your clients and setting appointments and your links to the calendar. Like we have all these little fancy things today that sometimes take us away from the nitty gritty of the business and what it is that we need to do in order to make our dreams come to pass, right? We need to make sure we're staying up to date with the trends, right? Especially right now, um, we know about the lead vendors and we get tired about the lead vendors. Listen, I was paying $35 for mailers and $42 for internet leads. $42 for the internet leads. I come over here like $6? Are you serious? $42 for the internet leads. We were getting the same thing. I didn't fill that out. I'm like, I swear this is your whole handwriting on here. Is that your handwriting? Oh, well, do you think you might have like dementia or something? Because I'm at the door letting them see it, right? Same things that I hear over on this side, I heard on the other side. I didn't fill it out. I don't remember doing it. Oh, I, I filled it out, but I thought I threw it away. Uh, I'm no longer interested. The same things. There is nothing new. Nothing new. But what we need to learn is to understand that it's coming, to expect it, and how do we help them understand that we really are just calling or knocking on the door to help them. We are not here to hurt them. And when we can get past those, oh, well, I'm not interested. Okay, are you not interested because you feel like it's, it's not a good time? Or did somebody tell you that you didn't qualify before? Or did you get a quote that was too much? Like, why are we not interested in protecting our family? Oh, you know what? I was turned down. I, they said I couldn't get coverage. I've heard, oh, I have life insurance already. I was told I couldn't get more coverage. These are like I used to be where I could only provide $35,000 or I was only able to provide $15,000 because they were modified, right? 
but that doesn't mean that they can't get coverage with another carrier. So with us understanding these things, being knowledgeable within our industry, we can say, oh, well, you know what? Well, you may not be able to get any more coverage with the company that you have, but I have multiple carriers and we can stack, meaning you can have multiple. We can make sure that we can get additional coverage. So let's see, were you looking at cremation or burial? Do you have a home? You know, what are the different things that you would like to provide, you know, an income for whenever you pass away? Asking more questions, right? Sometimes that's getting away from that script, but we got to dig. Networking and using our social media um, all day, every day. We need to be on social media. Um, I, I like to, to help out the team. Like I post different things. I'm like, okay, here's some flyers that you know I created. Put your name and your number on it. Post it, right? Post pictures. Monica, I, I'm going to bring her up because I see her first on my screen. She's doing a video every single day. And I'm like, it doesn't have to be about life insurance. It could be about anything, anything that you're passionate about. But you need to start showing up in the public eye because they are looking, they are watching. And these people that are on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube filling out a form, trust and believe they're clicking on it to see whose form is it? What do you look like? Do you have a family? Are you friendly? Are you authentic? Are you just everything perfect on your page? And I've seen that. And I'm like, I don't trust that. I don't trust it at all. I was trying to find a plumber the other day for my mom and a couple people posted on, on the, on the um, list on Facebook. First thing I did was went to the page. I didn't see any family members. I didn't see any personal pictures. All I seen was some AI type pictures. I was like, oh no, you could be a mass murderer for all I know. You're not coming to my, my mom's house. This is what we are doing because we know we can check people out. So you want to have your social media up, running. If you do not know how to do it, you need to tap into individuals. This is a business. Pay a couple of dollars for somebody to manage your, your page, right? But it's important. It is important. You are not, well, there could be some people that are making six figures. I, I, I know a, a handful of individuals, but they talk to everybody that they walk past. They're giving their card out to everybody that they see. They're getting their name, their number. They are doing the most. So if you're going to do that, have at it. And you can do it too. Most of us aren't doing that though. Most of us are not talking to everyone around us. The three foot rule. But we should. Okay. Time management. And I just have to laugh about the time management. I remember in the beginning door knocking, and this was before I had map view, before I had a, a routing system software that I can use. And before I had a GPS, I'm telling my age, right? We used to like print it out on MapQuest. And yeah, my husband, which he's probably gonna laugh, used to be like, why is it taking you all day to hit six stores? And I'm like, well, because I'm, you know, showing where I'm going. And he's like, oh my God. Now he was a landscaper. He's a man, he's been in sales. He knows, he pays attention to the streets. He can get everywhere. Like he probably knows how to get to Dagon, Florida, to his daughter's house without even needing a GPS. Not me. He bought me a GPS. And when I tell you that changed my life, because I was able to put in the addresses into that GPS. And then as soon as I would get to a house, they weren't there, boom, go to the next house, to the next house, to the next house. It saved me so much time and it routed me in the way that would save time. I was able to level up in how many people I was able to see in that day, how many homes I can go to, how many pre presentations, how many sales. Time management. I'm big on having my stuff together, right? You can't be sloppy with it. Have your little pad, your clipboard, your lead on the top. If you're in the field, I would have that thing right on my side in the car. As soon as I got out, I'm ready to go. There was no trying to get stuff together, find bags. It was everything stayed in and out, in and out, in and out. Time management. Take you three minutes to put in a, a, an address and a GPS because you're not prepared right? You don't know which house you're going to next. These are all time snatchers, which take away from our income. Us not having a schedule 
on the phones. And we've all done it. You know what? I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm good downstairs, right? You get downstairs, your loved one's down there, you get a little snack, then y'all start talking, then you're on Instagram, then you're on Facebook, and you're like, oh, you know what? I can learn this right now while I'm downstairs. Now four hours passed away, and you're like, oh my goodness. I only called 15 numbers, and I felt like I called 50 because we're not tracking anything. When we're on the phones, we have to be very clear on what the goals are, what is our schedule, and we have to track. Uh, Raheem, if you can unmute, I, I saw it come up. Please and go ahead and say what, what you posted. No, you you were just talking about um, using tools to utilize to, to, to make you more efficient in the business. And I was just saying that, you know, now we have auto dollars that used to cost a company thousands of dollars. Like the individuals wouldn't have them. But now we can get them as individuals for less than $100. That's what I was saying. Thank you. It came up so quick. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and even the dollars, we, we just had um, um, one of the top speakers on a couple of weeks ago on, on our, our telesales training platform. And he's like, I, I don't use a dollar. I just dial. He's also still in the field. Right. So we need to understand the position that we decide to take. What is it? What tools do we need? Right. We need to understand what tools do we need? I was on the last couple of days because we kind of like recommitted. We're like, we need to be getting over 100000 for next month, which starts now. And um, I was like, why have I not been using this daggone CRM? Because that baby, them calling them dials, we just ringing through. I use it for my text messages, right? Because I love, I, I, I get sales every month because the CRM is sending out. No, I don't think so. I'm sending out cues i mean text messages like and then they would say oh i'm ready now oh this and that like i love the one that says um hey did you did you happen to get your life insurance or um we can still get you set up for may 1st and i'm like oh still interested that was the crm doing it now were you getting ready to say something leo i raheem seen your hand up go ahead uh, i was gonna wait until you finish your um your topic right now on the CRM, I have a question for you so you don't lose your train of thought. Okay, absolutely. No, I won't lose it. But yes, like, it was like, just ringing. You know what I mean? And I'm sitting here like, okay, this is great. No thinking. And one of the numbers that it called, I had already called earlier, and then the person ended up answering. And I was like, see, if I didn't use the Dago CRM, I wouldn't even have called them again. It keeps us from thinking and overthinking like a lot of us do, it just does the work. And when they answer the phone, we answer it. Go ahead, what's your question? Thank you, Raheem. I have a question um, regarding, like, just to bring it back a little. Um, we have some new agents and, um, you know, there's a few of us here that came from a niche market, meaning we did one thing. Um, and I have a, a few others, but there's one of the main questions. How were you able to manage from going to a lake and jumping into an ocean? Because now you have all these varieties of things you can do. How did you focus to be able to not only learn the information, but be able to apply it? And I know you mentioned a little bit on the mm -hmm. on your niche, but I would like you to elaborate. Because you come from a niche market, obviously, mm -hmm. but you know we're motivated <clears throat> most of us make the change because we want to be able to offer more. Yes. We don't want to be a one-stop shop. I mean, we don't want to just be one one thing. We want to be able to offer and never leave money behind. Mm -hmm. So um, with that attitude in mind, it can become overwhelming. It can become a storm in your head. So without just relying on what you know and going to something of the unknown, how did you manage that to still be able to hit six figures with the transition where you went from our practice company, as people like to say? To yes. The world? Well, I guess I would say because my pay through that I was comfortable with, that was a six figure was cut. <laughs> that makes you immediately understand <laughs> you got to go to work. That was at zero. That's what I'm telling you. So my money, my money got cut. Oh. I did not see any residual renewals for six months. So that, yes. So that was like one day you're happy and you're comfortable and you're, you know, 
to, oh, snap. I have all these bills that I've had since I've been comfortable the last 10 years. You know what I mean? So this is a very good question. So, oh my God, the first couple days, because I am one that's always been a manager and in my mind, I was like, I got to learn everything because I got to train everybody. I got I to gotta understand it all because that's the, I was always the go-to person. And I tell you, I had everything because I have a, a master printer that just broke. But I mean, I'm talking like stacks of information that I printed out, had them all color coded, all in the binders, all the all the carriers, all the carriers, because <laughs> in my first month, I hired like 40 people. And yes, I shut down for like three days after that because I was on overload. Nothing, nothing stuck. Nothing. And I was like, okay, that's not going to work. Right? That's not going to work. And so because I think that I am a researcher, I started digging family first life that on Google, YouTube, I was Instagram, I was everywhere looking for training anybody's website. I went to so many of these managers and top producers' websites, clicking on, click, click, click to the trainings. A lot of them had them locked down. You know, you need the password, this and that, a third. Some of them, it was like just enter that little email and then they sent you a password. And let me tell you, I found that insurance toolkit. Boom. Insurance toolkit. I said, okay. So I got to clicking around the insurance toolkit. I didn't get training on the insurance toolkit. I, later on, we found some people had said there was discounts for it. Whatever. I was on that insurance toolkit. That was my Bible. I did not um, read and still have not gone through all the carrier's underwriting at all. Insurance toolkit. And I would ask the clients, what have you ever what have you ever been diagnosed with in your life? I didn't care about what their medications are taking right now so much, but I needed to know what were you diagnosed with? I put that in that insurance toolkit, hit the quote, height, weight, checking account, whatever. And with the carriers, whatever carriers that I was working with at the time, because I, even though I have every single carrier, the only reason I do is because I'm a manager and for individuals that it transferred over, I do not write with all those carriers. I need to manage my money, which is part of that. Managing the money, managing my roll-up, managing my chargebacks. You cannot manage your business with 20 carriers. You can't. And when I started looking at that insurance toolkit, I realized that some of them carriers that help the same type of health conditions or what have you, a dollar fifty difference. I'm not gonna mention, you know, carriers on here because I, I am live on um, YouTube as well. But there are certain carriers that I write with consistently. So when I had a roll up last year, a quite a nice roll up, mind you, it was able to be paid off in a month and a half because I was consistently writing with those carriers. So I didn't get in trouble, right? Then I also had a couple carriers that I could write that I knew I was still getting advanced with. So it's managing that understanding it's a business. But insurance toolkit, I paid that money, that monthly fee, and I promise you, every single one, I figured out really, real, real quick not to use the exact quote that they gave. So I always quote a little mm -hmm. higher, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's how. I jumped on that insurance toolkit. I ordered okay. those leads from the ILC and I went at it. Stay right there because that's that's the next question. You just said something. And it's important because you transitioned. You were talking a lot and about going in the field. A lot of us yeah. came from, you know, the, I mean, the ones that I look on the screen were, you know, putting thousands of miles on our car. Mm -hmm. and, um, we've transformed into a new world where oh, you need one of these. Well, I can't say because of my background. And you could pretty much, this is how we do business yes. now. So instead of driving from miles to hit the next door, now we could just dial. Mm -hmm. And we get all these things in place with the dial, um, the, the Zoom that we have for dialing and everything. But the important part that I was hoping and I really want to make sure that you hit on, when we were on the field and 
correct me if I'm wrong, it was pretty much 20 leads a week. Yep. That was what we needed, 20 leads a week. This is the equation. Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> yes. 20, 20 leads a week, no compromise. Forget the cost because the cost is going to be made in profit once you close enough leads. Now, it's an average. It's an average of numbers. Now, with me saying that, I would like you to tell, because it's different when it comes from my mouth. Right. Because sometimes they, you know, we go parent deaf, you know, after Oh, yeah. Month. Yeah. So I want the people to see how many leads do you need weekly in telesales to succeed and make, because we're talking about getting to six figures. So getting to six figures is anywhere between 10,000, which I think 10, you're really, eh, you're, you're scratching the surface because I almost missed it by going by that average. You need to do more like 12,000 a month in order to get your six figures and be comfortable in that six figure yeah. number. What yeah. leads you need weekly, no excuses, mm -hmm. to be getting, including these holidays, because I've closed on Christmas, so yeah. I just want to talk weekly. How many do you need as far as to do the phones? That absolutely depends on your leads. It depends on the type of leads that you're getting. If you're getting the higher intent leads, I mean, if you just stick with that $1,000 a week, you should hit six figures if you're working them. If you're working. And that 1000 sounds like a lot, but I mean, I just wrote one app and it's, it's you know, it's one app is the $1,000 that we would be getting. And, and again, it's that managing it. It's not thinking about it. I'm, my goodness, I've spent more. Again, that, that was 2,952 for one week that I did 82. I got 82 leads because sometimes you'll get a batch or two or three that's just not turning over for you right now. And it's not that the leads are bad. It's not that you, you could be bad. You know what I mean? Um, it's timing. It's timing. Have a stack of leads right here. A stack of leads right here. Okay? These are leads I generated from myself on Facebook. They're higher intent, meaning that I spent about $25 per lead. That's ranging for a couple months. It's over 200 leads there. And I turned off the campaign because they just kept running in. That didn't sell them right away. I sold a couple within that first, you know, couple days. I just did two of them last week were um, from the leads from back in November. I'm still working my own leads too, right? But see, they're from November. A lot of people would have counted them out. They don't work. They're dead. The system doesn't work. But we have to keep working. We have to keep working them. And that's why I love the CRM. Because it definitely keeps dripping on those leads as I'm continuing to buy new leads each week to make sure that, as they say, get the low hanging fruit. But then the CR, I love the CRM. I love the text messaging dripping on these clients. I didn't get into the emails yet. I was looking at that today. And I noticed that so many of these leads have email addresses. It's like, why, why am I not utilizing that? Like, even me thinking of some other things that I can tap into that's already sitting in the CRM. It's just a matter of me clicking on it like, okay, send them emails, right? We have so many things that we we could utilize. The unfortunate thing is sometimes we get lost in all the things that we can utilize. So it's, it's really nice if we could just have that part streamlined, like just use this, throw your leads in, make your phone calls, make three dials in a row in the a, in a morning, three in the afternoon, three in the evenings, leave a voicemail, start a text message. Next day, you call them again. Do that for three days in a row. Then you're going to see how many aren't, you know, bad phone numbers, not interested, whatever. And you you add more. Sometimes we will order at least twice in a week. Again, it's going to depend on your goal. But if you're thinking about I'm spending money, you'll never make it. Back to mindset. That's what you're saying. Mindset. So instead of you'll never spending, make it. You, so. I got a range that they told us basically when you go from door knocking is 20, when you go to phone calls, it's 102. It's going to be double or triple just on a weekly basis. And it's just a, a mindset, you know. Um, that's what it is. Find your lead yeah. source, find your, your vendor, get comfortable, make a relationship, do whatever you have to do, even yeah. if it's your CRM, whatever it is, but the leads. Unless you got an incredibly great warm market, there's other ways to get leads. Please remember the definition of a lead. Yeah. 
definition of a lead is just a number and someone to call. So if you get that from someone or you get that from a vendor, yeah. just remember that no here is promoting leads. I want to make sure you understand that it's not yeah. promotional lead because some, especially as a new agent, you think a lead is just that's all a lead is. There's a book out there that tells you what a lead is. Just remember that you need to be consistently working. Now, how many hours you work? Because this is important. This is going to be important. And honestly, you could drop the you could drop the mic on this. I'm glad your hubby's on. What up, Rob? Because you guys have first of all, you work the business together, but not everybody does work with a significant other. Mm -hmm. How do you do? This is something I'm going to definitely take notes on. How do you have this work life balance? Because <laughs> <laughs> let, let me let me start let me start by saying this and just shadowing this. Like, I met you at a convention mm. by early way there. So I, I knew of you, heard, you know, watched you, followed you, all that good stuff, and got to meet both of you at the convention. Not at the convention, and uh, it wasn't a convention because there was no training, it was just the Bahamas. Right? Well, so, yeah, they called it a convention though, right? Trip. Just to work with all. Um, but we went to the convention, I got to meet you, got to meet you, got to, you know, and at the time, we I, when I, we were in that practice company, I could call you, you were answering the phone, whatever. But as you grew, the phone wasn't that easy. I, I remember to get you on this, and again, I even sent you a picture of us hugging. So you know, <laughs> you knew who I was. I got that picture of my phone. I was like, you remember me? You me. Like, Don't answer my call. And you sent me a link to set an appointment. And I was like, what the hell is this? I got to answer 10 questions to talk to her? <laughs> Wow, I thought we was friends. <laughs> Don't say that too loud. Raheem be saying that all the time. Like, what's your link? I got to get on the calendar. She, she sent me. I'm just letting you guys know. And it's not it's not personal because even to do the call before doing this, yeah. you told me get on the link because you're busy. and You multitask in many businesses and you have a relationship that you obviously culture. You know, you have a culture. Like, I remember calling you. You were like, I was just on your call. I had to make dinner. Me and Raheem were eating. I was like, what the hell? How is she, how is she doing all this? And Raheem is yeah. not going nuts. Well, maybe he is because he's bald. But how do you manage that work-life business? Day by day, by day. You know what I mean? Day by day. I, will, I always tell that I always give Raheem the props on that because back in the day, he was like, listen, do I have to become that the, the keyboard in order to get some play in this house? Because I was the one that was... I mean, I'm, I'm, I have to say it. It's the honest to God's truth. In the beginning... Like, Cause I was like this, I was like, you know, I'm running for this ring. You know, I'm da -da -da -da. he's like, hello, you know, um, and even still sometimes I can, I'm, I, I, lo I love the work. I have a very big goal. You know, I'm going for debt free. I have a lot of debt from, you know, rehabbing my mom's whole house and the pandemic and all kinds of things. And I know the business can do it. So I, I want that all the way clear. I'm going to have that cleared. Right. But see, when I, I get into that, it's important to have someone else to be like, okay, we need to go ride the bike. Okay, we need to be working out. We need to be doing something else, right? And doing it in love is important. So we, you know, we still working through that. Like he says all the time, there is no real balance. Some days he's he's working and I'll be the one like the other day. I was like, oh, you want to go ride the bike? He's like, seriously? Like, I'm, I'm making my calls today and this and that and the other. And I'm like... One of these days we'll get on on the same day where we both can go ride the bike. But we're like really set on a certain schedule because we have goals right now. So if you if you're yeah. staying on the same, you know, same path and, and the communication has to be on there and then working through regular life ups and downs, you know, a balance, you're always gonna work on that. It's always gonna be a you know, it's always gonna be a work. Now, I want to make sure some people ask other questions. I'm always prepared, and I'm going to steal every moment. And I, I promise to keep you guys only until like 8.45, the latest. If you want to go earlier, you can. There's no, because Chrissy can stay on. When, she, when you have her, she'll stay here until it's time I'll to stay here. He'll give yeah. that tap on the shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> He's right there. Talk to me. Forget about people. So um, please, I'll open it up to you guys, yeah. especially for agents that, you know, get tired of hearing my voice. I got Adrian. Go ahead, Adrian. She she mentioned um, a roll up. What's the difference between a roll up and a charge back? Okay, so whenever you are um, in the management team leader role and you hire agents, um, I don't like to say under you, but they're your, your partners, but they are under you. Um, the company pays us. I like to call it a love check. So say my comp is a hundred and my downline is ninety five. The company gives me five percent. 
not off of yours, but the difference. They pay me 5% to help train you, motivate you, keep you working, help you understand your business, right? So they, they pay us to train you. If in fact you, say you write some bad business, you go out and you write, well, they change it now. So a lot of people can't get paid on family. Thank you for that. But if people were going out and writing up friends and family and getting advanced, getting advanced for anybody that doesn't know is we get paid nine months commission up front. So you got paid nine months up front. You quit in month three. You owe six months back, right? It's similar to a job. Most people don't think about that. But like if you were working a job and you first started a job, you work almost four weeks before you get a paycheck. That first one or two weeks, they hold it. So that whenever you leave, if you get fired or you quit or, or what have you, if you owe money back to the company for a vacation time that you took that you didn't earn because you didn't stay for the whole year, that's what that is. This is no different. But the difference is that the agent, they leave and say, they're like, you know what? I don't want to do life insurance ever again. They don't care about getting a vector. And a vector is when they uh, the agent owes money to the carrier and they don't pay it. Then they get a vector. It's like it goes on your credit, your insurance credit. But if they decide they never want to be in the business again, it doesn't matter to them. Your upline, who was responsible for training and motivating and keeping you up on your business, we have to pay that. Or we can get a vector. So that's a roll up. That's why we're very, we try to be very strict on, um, you know, who we hire, who we add to our team, who we want to partner up with. Y'all, if you go back 25 minutes when I said I'm running like 40 people when I first started and I did all that, those 40 people are not here. And I and I got a hefty roll up, but I just didn't know any better. I was opening up for everybody because they all wanted to be here, but everybody wasn't serious. Good question. And you're just very good question. You have to start recruiting, you know, you just got to recruit with care. You got to make sure. Yeah. A lot of the season people start saying we're not looking for curious, we're looking for serious. Yeah. And just your mindset on it. And individuals that want to be partners, you know, they they really want to be here. Like I love the fact that we have like this setup is like our live dials where we're here working together, right? Like my core seven, we're always on together. We're always talking. We have a group chat. So we're back and forth. It's like, okay, we're going to lunch. We're working out together, not together together, but we're all like working out now. So we're doing things outside of just the job. We have a relationship. So if somebody at all ever thinks that they're like, I'm looking at something else, we communicate that. And it's like, okay, well, let's see if that's going to be the best idea for you. Or let's see how, if that is it, how you can exit this business where everybody still wins. It's all about building the relationships all the way around. Yep. And besides Adrian, somebody, that's a brand new person asking a question. Of Very a good question. Build, yes. Coming from the health industry. Anybody else? Come on. We got her. Listen, unless you want to fill out a 10 questionnaire, 10 questionnaire to get an appointment with her. <laughs> <laughs> you better steal this time. It's free. <laughs> I am cracking up. Hi, Kirby. Hi. Hey, Kirby. How are you? I'm good. So I noticed you said you have all the carriers just so that um, your agents can have access to the carriers, but you don't write with all the carriers. How do you keep active without them cutting you off? Well, because the agents under me write for the carrier. I don't have to write as a manager. Right. But and now this I'm, is all about six figures in eight months. Yep. Can you hit six figures in eight months without a team? Yes, I did it without a team. Because I wasn't able to have a team until after I hit six figures. And actually I, I shouldn't say it, but I'm gonna say it, it's easier. It's easier to hit six figures without without a team. <laughs> It you're is. You're not training. You're not, you're going, you're yes. attending, not creating. So it's a little different. We make so much more money on our own pen. Oh my goodness. You know, and that's one of them things. Uh, yep. You can do that in a month now. Like Yannick is one of the, the agents who we just seen him post 92,000 on his own, you know, um, a couple weeks ago. Can you elaborate that that was not AP? Because I know it wasn't. Yeah. That was AP, ladies and gentlemen. That was Ching Ching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, yeah, he's he's doing the IULs big time with businesses, business to business. So he's able to get, you know, larger um, deals done, 
You know what I mean? He talks about every Tuesday he does a training on it for free. For free. So yeah, you know, um, he's just now starting to open up and hire to train individuals. But yeah, you you absolutely, absolutely can make it faster without a team. Hi, Connie. I think Connie had a question. She was waiting when she was saying, oh, she was saying bye bye. Um, anybody else got a question? Anybody? It's, it's, there's a lot of females here. This is, uh, Tell me, we're taking over, man. No, there's a problem. I'm looking we about like, to take bro, over. Man. The ladies are taking over, bro. Yeah. yeah. Time to set them goals, set them goals, and attack it. I was going through my phone a second ago trying to find our picture from the Bahamas. I for like I I just saw it. I couldn't find it though. Well, I got yours and I got you dancing, so don't worry about it. I record everything. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I, <guess. laughs> I promise. Yes, yeah, he did. He popped it up. I was like, I remember you. I, I definitely remembered you. I didn't remember that picture, and I was like, oh my, I still have that dress, and I can still fit it. Thank God for that. But yeah, the, the, the as what, as you guys post about you working out in your twenty day challenges. Yeah, that's like I, I had to unfriend Raheem. <laughs> he will keep you going for sure. He will keep you keep you motivated and working out for sure. Um, one of the very last things that I, I had on here was setting clear, clear goals, and within the goals, making sure that you're writing down what to do in the event that um, challenges present themselves. So already preparing for the challenges before they happen, right? Especially if you're an individual that um, you have to deal with children or picking up, dropping off, sports, things like that. Having everybody in the household on board with what you're trying to do is very important. And, and having grace, you know, that um, sometimes it's not going to work out as you planned. Like I was on extra two hours yesterday on live dials last night. I'm like, I spent two extra hours and still didn't get nobody yesterday. And today I was on and I had to end a little bit earlier because of the meeting here and I didn't get anybody today. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, tomorrow's another day. And then I have um funeral because, well, What's today? Yeah, tomorrow's another day. So I'll be on early for the full day tomorrow. Right? No. Half day tomorrow because my girlfriend, my, one of my best friend's mothers passed away on a Monday. So I've been helping her with um, planning a funeral because, you know, even though she's a life insurance agent, she went blank. You know what I mean? And so we stepped in. Raheem's helping out. I'm helping her out and just helping her through that process. And it's, again, just another one of those things that just make us, just kind of puts a fire under us to start calling our, our clients and making sure that we're talking to the people. Like, this is serious. Like, a couple months ago, her mom was fine. Was not expecting this at all. And then now she's gone, you know? I mean, it happened like that. And it can happen to anybody. Anybody. So tracking your goals, making sure that you're tracking how many calls. Like, I'm doing the 100... I have tons of like sheets and stuff, but I'm doing like the hundred uh, presentation goal. It's my own little, let me put it this way because they look good. It's my own little my little sheets. I create all, I'm a creator. I create all kinds of stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm doing the hundred. So I'm keeping track of that. How long is it taking me to get through a hundred presentations? I did this back in the day and I'm doing it again because I'm pushing myself. And as I'm tracking my presentations, I'm tracking my dials tracking how many leads I got. I'm tracking how much I'm spending. I'm tracking all of it. Because one, I am preparing for whenever I get out of this large debt in the time frame that I'm going to get out of it, there will be a breakdown of that that is possible if you believe. And also a lot of the drama and trauma that is going on, it has gone on and will continue to go on because I am doing and wanting to do certain things that a lot of people won't right because it's a okay. challenge so yeah I got, a two part, I got a two part question before you go and yep. i think two can you just hit a little bit on mentorship and the second part to that question that i think is important self-development we did not touch those oh, we yeah. said mindset but we're just throwing mindset the yep. word mindset can mean so many things just like leverage yeah it took me two years to understand the full definition of leverage in this business. It's not the dictionary one. Believe me, I can tell you, we can sit down and talk about it for an hour. But what do you mean by as far as 
um, what would you do for self-development? Because I really don't even know how you have time to read. Oh, oh I'm, in, I'm in two book clubs. Yes. I love audio books. <laughs> audio books. Audio books. I mean, audio books. Um, audio books. And I'm, I am one that I take notes. So I always have my notebook around somewhere when I'm listening to different things. Um, audio books. Shut up. Stop whining and get a life. Gary Wingert. Stop. Shut up. Stop whining and get a life. It is a um, very straightforward, easy read, in your face type of book. So I'm definitely going to mention that one. Um, of course, the Millionaire Mind. I have I have the audio for the Millionaire Mind that helped. And and every time I listen to that again, although it, I'm gonna just be honest, it took me a minute to be able to listen to him because his voice is one that's like I can't stand it. But once I started really like getting past that tone. And then the the information, I was like, yeah, we need to have these separate bank accounts, having your separate bank account from your personal bank account. There's so many different things. Um, but the self-development, like battlefield of the mind right now, I'm back on that because I know that I've been in a spiritual warfare. I talked about it a while ago, like having to constantly be aware of what is going on and why. So every morning and throughout the day, I am listening to motivational things. While I'm on live dials, I have it playing. I have motivational clips, audiobooks playing in the background. I'll hit pause when a call comes through, whenever I'm doing auto dial or when I'm talking to one of the agents. Because again, we always stay on live dials. It's all day. It is all day. I have a prayer wall over here that um, I created earlier this year to really sit down and it's it's praying over your finances, your family, friends, marriage, your purpose, your business, like all of the things. So it's similar to a vision board, but it's a prayer board. And um, that's been very helpful. And even transitioning because I understand that who I am is not going to take me to that seven figure per year, which is what I'm going for. So I have to change again. And it is very uncomfortable to change again, right? Because I know things have to be stripped. So that's what I'm, I'm, I'm going for now. So the different things that listening are um, really your, it's, it's all about belief systems, your belief, right? Your relationship with God, because he's given us everything, everything that we need. We just got to move out the way. We just have to move out the way. The mentorship, you know, again, we all mentor each other. Like me and my my whole squad, I'm I'm so grateful for them. I'm so proud of them. We all mentor each other. I'm not just the like, I'm the manager, so everybody listens to me. No. We it's like open forum. Somebody has an idea, somebody's doing something. Of course, like I research a lot. I might be like, ah, oh, I don't know about that. But it's open. So we're all accountable to one another. And all of us have the the open forum to send the text message like. Where are you at? <laughs> What's going on? Right. And then even when we have issues, personal issues, making sure that you have some strong prayer warriors around you that have the same belief as well as like the same goals that can help you stay in line because it is God first, family, your family second, and then your career. And when these things are out of order, when your relationship with God and your relationship with your family is out of order, it affects this business because this is a relationship business. There's no way around it. Everything's got to be in order for your energy, your spirit, your belief, for everything to line up. And it's possible. It happens all the time. You just have I, to push through and do it. I appreciate all your words, your time. Um, I'm glad I didn't have to fill out another 10 10 question questionnaire just to find out why I want to meet with you and what's on my mind. I mean, this lady is a tax agent. She's a, 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 psych, a, a psychologist, a therapist, a wife. I think she learned all these businesses by just taking care of Raheem. Hey. Hey, you're in debt. He, Come here. He be up with me. Listen. He's the number one client. 
So, but either way, I just want to really thank you from the bottom of my heart. Yes. I told them, there's, a, there's a few, a lot of the ladies that are still on, I told them that to meet you, especially um, I have Saki here. I got um, yeah. Zinga, uh, Takira, um, Felicita. I told them that they had to meet you because something about the way they, they move reminds me of a, a different version of the progression I've seen of you. Yes. <laughs> so, so, but the person you were, I see them like going into the same path because, like I said, it's been I know you now seven, damn, I'm getting old, seven years. Yeah, it's been a minute. So uh, I've seen a lot and I always follow. That's how I learned watching. Nobody trained me, guys. Mm. Unfortunately, here's one of the unfortunate. I'll leave you with these little thoughts real quick just so I can close out. Unfortunately, I was hired by the top person. So what happens? When that person hires you, there's not many people to train you because that person's running the whole organization. Right. I was literally given the story of here some leads go. <laughs> so I was like, what the hell do I do? So I do, you know, I was a teacher, so I got on the computer and I looked up the company and there's this big smiling lady talking about cooking and talking about what I do. And I said, wait a minute, that's the same company. Oh, hold up. And that's how I met Christine for the first time. She was literally doing a presentation while cooking. I don't even know if she cared if she was on the internet or if she purposely did it, but I was like, hey, whatever. She's saying the words. <laughs> like that's but that is funny. I did not I did not know. Yeah, I didn't know. My presentation. Yeah. After that, um, I have to make it sound more manly and um a little more aggressive because she's very nice and very, you know, and I'm not that. So I had to figure it out, but I did. And that's how I learned is watching yeah. other people and then honestly reaching out to other people that are doing the business. You steal. I, I call this the business of stealing. It's legal to do. Actually, it's the best form of flattery. Yes. So I actually start stealing. So all of you that are starting, the best advice I can give, and, and I, I would like Raheem, since he's experienced as well, to just leave them with one thing. My piece of advice would be don't become a professional student. <laughs> Do not become a professional student. Do not keep trying to educate yourself. Listen, if we were in a niche market, I wouldn't have such a problem with it because I trained a lot of agents that were like that. In this field, I'm speaking from my heart, I come uncensored, and everybody that knows me, I say, this is from the mind of Leo. Do not become a professional student. I prefer that you fail through practice and learning than you get scared of getting started because you're never going to move. I have done, I, there's so many people when I was just doing final expense that I undersold them because I was scared. Then when I came over to the broker world, I was giving people things that they didn't need. But at the end of the day, what we do, especially that they don't have it, we can't go wrong. We're still mm -hmm. helping. Mm -hmm. We might not be tackling the biggest problem, but you're still solving a problem. So don't get stuck on stupid or let me be nice. Don't get stuck on bubble gum. <laughs> okay, seriously just get moving listen you got some and, and, and mentors are not given they're chosen you choose your mentor Christine didn't know she was mentoring me I was watching her YouTube mm -hmm. and now I am the biggest annoying human being in this industry I tell every leader I meet do not give me your number because I will call you yes. can I have your number that's my warning they give me the number I will call them at some crazy time I know Roosevelt, you look at me like that, but you can ask any anybody that's giving me that number, I call them. And the other companies, I call the presidents. Here, I call Sean Mike. You don't believe me, ask him one day. And he knows my story about giving my mom my kidney because we had a conversation. Yeah. I will call anybody. So at the end of the day, everyone's your resource, everyone's your mentor. Don't get stuck on bubblegum and keep pushing. That's my message. Raheem, you got something for the people before they go? I don't think I should go after that. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> you did a great job, as always. Um, mm -hmm. There was something that you said earlier. I don't remember what it was, but I wrote a note down, flipping around trying to find something to write on. And um, I wrote in my little book. Um, don't take justified, unjustified breaks in this business. Um, as independent contractors, that is the biggest downfall across the board. 
and it doesn't matter the industry. It doesn't matter whether you open up a beauty salon. It doesn't matter if you're a barber, if you're a landscaper. Um, you got then it doesn't matter what the industry is when you're independent when, when you're not independent one of the things that i get is a uh, is a person who um has had a team and have done a ton of interviews when i'm sitting with the interview with somebody uh one of the common things that we hear is i got a really good work ethic uh my job used to call me on my days off and i would come in i wouldn't take vacations i'm like dude that's not work ethic you're trading your time for the dollars that they pay you. And if you know that no matter how sucky you are at your job, no matter how bad of an attitude you might have going in, no matter if any of that stuff, you're going to get that paycheck. It's different when you have to go kill something in order to eat. Mm-hmm. That's what you see what your true work ethic is. And an analogy that I'll give you, that I'll leave you with is... You have two agents that are at a one out of five closing ratio. In other words, they need to do five presentations in order to sell one. By the way, that's the national average. And I think if a lot of agents understood that, they they would be less stressed being an agent, right? Because it's like, okay, how quickly can I get through five people? So you have two agents who are one out of five ratio. One agent, just to fast forward his week or month, he does five presentations and gets an F. She, he, okay? You have that other agent who he, she does five presentations in one day. They're still going to both get that one F because they're both one out of five. But one of them is going to end up being a frustrated agent. One of them is going to be an agent who's questioning this business. One of them is going to be an agent who don't have a lot of support at home. One of them still got a whole week left to go, and they only, they're only they only on uh, Monday, and they got to sell because they did five presentations on Monday. Tuesday, they do it again. Wednesday, they do it again. Thursday, they do it again. Friday, Saturday, say I'm taking a day off. I got four apps for a week, and I'm just trying to figure this business out. I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. But they made four or five thousand dollars. Yeah, it's 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 you know one of the things that that other agent is doing is they're taking too many breaks. Whether that's because they're working another job, so 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 foolish. Whether that's because they're they're Ubering on the side, so foolish. Whether that's because they're like um, I just don't want whatever it is, whatever it is. And if if you're a person that only for whatever reason cannot do uh, more. That's okay. That's, I'm, I'm not. I'm not talking to you. But what I'm talking to is the majority of us who just take these unjustified breaks when we shouldn't. You know, Chrissy talked about when she's when I came upstairs and I said, "Hey, babe, let's go. Let's go ride the bikes." If I tell y'all how much we spend on these dad on bikes, you be like, y'all better ride them damn bikes every day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what I mean? just on the cost of them alone. But she one time, if you was if you were listening, she one time told me, "Nope, I gotta work," mm-hmm. because she couldn't justify taking that break. Mm-hmm. And then there was another time where she came to me and was like, "Let's go," and I'm like, "No," nah, because I couldn't justify that break. I hadn't hit my numbers. I hadn't I had stuck to my commitments. So if I take another break, it's only going to hurt me. You know what I mean? And I always tell my partners in, in the business, and I'm done. Thank you, bro, for letting me uh, say something on Chrissy's call. Is it, it, the only downfall, the only slump, the only dry spell that we have in this business is 1,000% self-inflicted. Period. <laughs> it's real easy to fix. All right. Well, thank you, Ron. Ron, Ron. Yeah. Really. Um, Chrissy. You can close us out. All right. Well, I mean, I appreciate it. I, I sent you a message. Um, I had somebody on YouTube, Take Charge Nutrition, had asked, can you discuss eliminating distractions? Um, and I had sent it to Raheem since he was he was talking real quick. If Yeah, I'd let him shut that down. You want to talk about that, eliminating distractions real quick? I'm trying to get him more comfortable yeah, on camera. I would love to. This is me all day. Mm-hmm. Learn how to put your middle finger up. <laughs> 
You guys have a good one. No, and, and, and what I mean is keep your distraction, right? You got to learn how to sometimes say, you know what? I'm going to wear, wear your problems like a jacket. And we have to learn sometimes how to take that jacket off. It'll be it'll be waiting on you when you get done making your hundred dollars. Yeah. It'll be done. It'll be there when you get done knocking on your 15, 20 doors. But I promise you, because we are focusing on something that's going to help with solutions, those problems kind of if, if if they don't go away by just making more money, we we can we you know like maybe. You know, um, one of my distractions is I got my kids and I got to pick up my grandbabies and this, that, and the third. Well, I could sprinkle a few thousand dollars over that and hire somebody, put the kids in an Uber. You know what I mean? (laughs) So if if I throw my finger up to that problem and I say, okay, well, there's like, remember the old Apple commercials when the iPhone first came out? Now I'm telling my age, but I think we all can remember back to the first iPhone, a few campaigns. They had a slogan. There's an app for that. Yes. This is this is before when apps first came out. Remember? Yes. And you're like, what if I want to go to the mall? There's an app for that. What if I want to do this? There's an app for that. Okay, so what if I need a babysitter? There's an app for that. What if I need a new car because I got a hoopty and I can't? I don't even know where I'm going to get down to my name. There's an app for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um, compartmentalize those distractions. Don't avoid them because problems can compound. Yeah. But understand that if we just focus on those problems, we're just going to have those problems. And then they're going to start to compound. When we throw the finger up to those that are going to problem and we focus on the solutions, we can kind of minimize those distractions. Mm-hmm. Finding the power you, and no. You become tougher at doing it. You grow thicker skin at doing yeah. it. A lot of people say to me, somebody just said it to me recently, you act like you don't care about nothing. I said I, it. <laughs> I, I said it. I just a little bit. But you know what I mean? Like, it's not that I don't care. It's just that you become conditioned. Yeah. You know, like Chrissy said, in order for me to go from six figures to seven, in order for me to go from five figures to six, I had to change. In order for me to go from six to seven, I have to change again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just so you guys know, because I know some of you come from another business, um, they work their own businesses. Yes. It's not like what um, like what I'm used to in one of the companies I was, that husband and wife have to be in the same organization. No, no. They probably compete at home, and if she cooks, he doesn't eat if he beats her. It, it's like No. Is- <laughs> he, he probably would try, but I wouldn't allow that. I don't, mm-mm, we ain't doing that. We are not doing that. Just so you guys know, like you can see his symbol, but his team is behind him. Like they have their own businesses, which is one of the luxuries we have. So th- this is this is mentorship at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there you go. We all do it now. So <laughs> this is yeah, this was them. awesome. And but- you can find them on Telegram, and they do answer. Now, if you try to make a phone call, just know that you have a ten question essay to fill out. You clicked on the wrong link. If you if you go to my life now group.com and put current agent, there's no questions. They're all part of the telegram now. I put everybody in there. So now you yes. some names and some faces. His name is Raheem, not um iPad. Okay. And this is Christine now. I'm yes. Liam Garcia, but I go by Mr. Get Off the Bench himself. And I want to thank you all for a wonderful night. And they will be back, even if they charge me, because I love Chrissy. Thank you. I love you back. I appreciate the time. This is awesome. Guys, we we all she have it. Books. She has yes. books on these topics. If you want to read deeper yeah. charts, and when she says she's a creator, I'm not promoting her like so you guys could go out and buy things. It's just that she really, really has yeah. a lot of material that I've taken and even put in my notability for my scheduling. Like yeah. if I'm gonna support an outsider, I'm gonna support my sister because I know that what she has works because I look at her and she's making double the amount I am. That's all I got to say with that. Period. So, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, as always, much love. And I'll see you guys in the trip. All right. God bless you. Have a good night. Peace. All right, guys. So, that is it. Thank you very much for joining on the live. I didn't know any other way to do it but to share it on the big screen because I was on someone else's call. Um, tomorrow we are going to be live 
on Facebook again, Instagram, and YouTube. Raheem and I are um, doing a live every Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we are talking all about um, the life of um, insurance agents as obviously a couple and individuals. So we'll be going over so many different topics and it will be open where you can ask questions and interact with us. So I see you all tomorrow, seven o'clock, whether it be right here, if you jump on Facebook or Instagram and everything is my name, Christine Ill and Christine Austin Ill, same person. Have a good night. Thank you for your questions and joining and we'll see you next time. Peace.